family, which consists of her husband and her five children, who are small children. They're not adults, okay? She leaves her small children to run across the country to go find this person's husband. And so, and she doesn't tell anyone. She just leaves a note that's like, you know, blah, whatever. But she doesn't say what she's doing. She doesn't tell anyone what she's doing. Like, there's just better ways to go about this. Like, you know, have your husband go do it. Um, like, there, there's just other things that could have happened that would have prevented the plot of this book from happening, which I guess would, would make it so there's no book. But I just don't think that the plot makes sense. I don't know what woman in her right mind would leave her children knowing that she's probably going to be shunned by her family because she just, like, left them. Like, it just... It doesn't make any sense. So that's like my first main problem is that I think that the whole reason for this book exists, like the whole crux or beginning of the plot just doesn't make any sense. Um, and yes, I'm being much nicer than I was the first time in case you're wondering. <laughs> um, so I, I, yeah, I don't like that. And then, um, you know, as the book progresses, she comes across various people. So first there's a guy that's from her town that helps her like cross the river and then he decides that he's gonna stay with her to kind of like look over her protect her why you don't know her why and now there's two people from that town that's gone missing a woman and a man so like that kind of makes it worse okay because now everyone's gonna think that y'all ran off together but that's okay and then you know stuff happens and then they get attacked by a group of people and what does fanny do oh she murders them so she murders three of the people this is like a well-adjusted normal human being who murders, murders three people of course they were attacking them <laughs> and they were well to kill them and of course jake is almost home which means that i'm probably gonna stop filming in a second and then pick this up in a little bit um but yeah, she, she murders them. Um, and I just, like, don't understand. Like, the first one? Sure. The second one? Maybe. But the third one? Like, now you're just a murderer. Okay. Because <laughs> um, the first one's Not attacking the person, you, and the, the second one's usually you're done, and they come after you. And the third one, this whole, like, the whole like why trope of this like very special female that like everyone is kind of like obsessed with and is like trying to like they like can't help themselves from like feeling like these urges for her and like they can't help themselves from like doing things for her and it's just like it's just not realistic because people only care about themselves so it, i find it highly highly unrealistic for a person one of the people that she like you know absorbs into her little like band of whatever is um a guy who hates jewish people okay he hates them he was jewish and then he got like constricted like there's a, a period of time where they were just like snatching children from homes to put them into the russian army and like they had to basically like um i don't know what it's called when you rena renounce your faith and you know take like i guess a christian name i have no idea what um, the religion the, the other people are in this book um so he does that and then he is basically like super anti-jew at that point um or like starting from that point and so they go and they stay with him in his like hotel when they're trying to evade the cops and trying to like find out what to do and then the cops show up and he he protects them he protects this woman and you know his friend from the, the person that's like kind of with her and he he goes off with them and hmm. It's all because this woman wants to get a, a divorce for her sister. Like, he leaves, he puts his life in danger. He leaves his livelihood. He leaves all of this stuff for, for basically, like, the stupidest reason to, to do this treacherous, like, dangerous journey involving murdering people. Oh, and she murders two cops, just in case you're wondering. So now she's murdered five people, <laughs> and they just, like, keep going. And again, there's a, a, it's just something about the writing is just, like, very, like not good to me to me and i i don't like it and then you know the plot keeps going and we get to this point where everyone finds out that this man that's like been helping her is the father who's like some guy that helped save like you know hundreds if not thousands of russian soldiers lives by basically manipulating their captain which was actually like the only part of the book where i was like really invested and like worried about his safety because i was like what if the captain like catches on to him like that was the only part of the book that i was like really like nervous and excited to read um 
And so we get to this point, and then there's a lot of like, it's just, I just didn't like it. And, uh, you know, eventually they're captured. So it ends up being Fanny and like four or four men that have like kind of helped her. So uh, where did, um, where did Jude come from? I think everyone, everyone who loves this book would want to know about Jude. I mean, how did he pop up in your, in your head? I, I, I don't know is the unsatisfying answer. He's someone that, you know, I mean, I did want to write a character, and I've talked about this, who never gets better. Um, and when you have, you know, and if we think of most fiction and of most art in general, narrative art, it is about one person's journey from here to here. And what would happen if you had a person who started here and went all the way around and ended up here? What would be the narrative tension of that book? What would be the momentum? And what would be the point in which the reader would figure out simultaneous to, to Jude himself that, uh, that he wouldn't get better? And how would the reader remain engaged um, in his life in much the way he has to remain engaged in his life? It's, um, he's a, you give him a, a, a torturous and, and torturous path. Um, but I gather your editor, Jerry Howard, he described the book as a, a miserablest epic, I think. And, um, yeah. and, and I think when you, when you um, sent in the manuscript, um, he wanted you to tone down the violence. Yes. Um, or the, perhaps not the violence, but the, um, oh, the extremities of it all, the extreme events. He did, and you know, part of this, I think, was, um, you know, your editor is, is a reader first and a businessman second and he was worried about how he was going to market it which is a legitimate and valid concern and um i think he was um one of the wonderful things about jerry i mean i bash him a lot in public but one of the wonderful things about him and for any great editor is any great editor will be able to um is terrifically catholic in his tastes and will be and never has a fixed idea of what he likes and so we'll read anything and even into a you know older age we'll we'll keep redefining what it is that he is responding to in in a book and i think this was it was interesting for me as an editor myself to see this playing out with jerry this you know his real struggle with the fact that this wasn't the kind of book that he thought he was going to get. He didn't quite know what to do with it. He didn't quite know how he felt about it. He didn't quite know if he liked it. And and often when you give something to an editor, that is what you're what you're seeing. You know, you actually don't want someone who's going to say, "I love it. It's brilliant. Let's just do it." His discomfort um, was. It, I wouldn't say it was clarifying to me, but it was. Um, it, it was interesting to see because you don't really know until you have someone read it what exact what effect the book is going to have um, and so I think all this all this is a long way of saying that I think that when he asked me to tone down the violence it was um, sort of an initial reaction mm. uh, and not something that he really felt um, he had an argument for you know he didn't know which parts to cut he wanted me to cut 300 pages from it he um, didn't know uh, what parts to, um, uh, what sections I should I should lighten? He didn't really have an idea. It was a reaction to the thing of the, the book of the, the thing itself, as I should mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. So did you end up did you end up trimming any of it? Not at all. And and and, and you you trimmed. Uh, I mean, none, none of the violence, but none of the the original manuscript was very little. So the original manuscript was about 960 pages. And I think by the time it went into uh, the process, it was probably about 940. Right. Yeah. That's that's pretty good going, isn't it? Yeah. yeah for an, for an edit. Um, reading both the people in the trees and and a little life, it does seem to me that you're very interested in. All I want to do is create art and sell it. So I did sign up for an art show today. Um, that's going to happen um, in June. And there's something, I think that, yeah, the deadline is this month, I think towards the end of this month. So I did um, already submit before the deadline. And that's for next month though. But I need something that's every weekend. Like, can I just go pop my tent and set it up and sell art anywhere? No, or every artist would be doing it. This is not New York City. Um, yeah, I don't have a permit to do that. So. I'm also going to check on that because I actually want to do that. Um, I'm going to check on the bookstore in um, Dallas that I used to go to all the time. 
they start selling and having vendors right in front of their store on their sidewalk. Um, I purchased some earrings there before. Um, um, I think it was my Bob Marley earrings. Anyway, there were there was art there, some abstract artists. Um, so I have to do what I have to do, but um, I have so much art that I already have that I need to sell. So sitting here and just painting seems like I'm just keeping up. Um, I did sell five pieces of art at the last art show for Art Scoggle, so I keep going so I can continue to have more art and always be ready. But uh, also still painting a lot for the farmer's market because I want to do all the little paper art and sell them from anywhere to $25 um, dollars each to $50 dollars each and that's it and you know just really lower my prices so things can go and I can make money and a profit because even if I sold them at $25 each there's 30 sheets in there that I bought $26 um, for the whole book of 30 sheets so 25 times 30 right um, gonna be making a profit um, the paints my paints are pretty dirt cheap so you can always find them on sale I use the acrylic um, house paints that have a really good 15 20 year warranty and then the other smaller paints um, yeah I use all kind of acrylic paints and they always last a really long time now I treat them with acrylic spray so yeah I like the size because people do a lot of gallery walls and you can just frame this paper and create a beautiful gallery wall if you just have all black and whites and you have something that you just want to put some color in I gotcha $25 $50 for an original piece I'm not copying them to sell a bunch of prints I'm giving or selling the original pieces of artwork and that's one thing that people like about purchasing my art is that that's on paper um, I did sell some copies in the past and they sold but the ones that really sell are the ones that are original pieces and not copied and so I'm gonna keep doing that because I love it and I'm gonna paint anyway and that's the only job I want to do because it's getting down to a point where mentally that is the only thing that I can do I had someone ask me or tell me tell me you're not me but they told me that I am having panic attacks and it's hard for me to work because I'm not doing anything about it now mind you, I just gave the story about having the panic attack and staying the whole day. The whole day. I worked at Texas Workforce Commission for the past 12 years, or for 12 years. I have panic attacks all the time. 12 years. Looks like I did something about it. So don't offer me advice saying because I said I can't work anymore or don't think that I can do a certain type of work. and tell me I'm not doing anything about it. I've been working all my life with panic attacks. It's just certain things I can't do anymore and I refuse to die on the work floor because I'm all stressed out having panic attacks. I can't do it anymore. Never said I wasn't gonna do anything else. Thus, the interview that comes Monday right now I'm painting for art that I know will sell been working two and three jobs all my life <laughs> painting and artwork is work
it's Tuesday and why am I at home from work from a job that I just started last Thursday Friday and yesterday Monday I had a really bad panic attack at work um, we did some sort of test we're on zoom we're in a little small training room there's about one two three four five six seven of us in this um, small conference room turned into a training room on a table with double monitors so it's very crowded and then there's zoom people good i don't know 20 something or more and the trainer chooses me to question first and do this little impromptu test over some material she just went over and I froze and started having a panic attack. I was getting through some of it because I was just writing it down so it was in my head but I could not spit it out so I knew I was having a panic attack and therefore I had to just stop talking and it's not like I wanted to stop talking I wanted to answer her and but I couldn't I froze and it was one of the worst panic attacks I've had in front of a room full of people as well as having a camera right on your face I felt so out of control and then I felt nothing as I went blank and froze and I did come out of it a little bit I'm still anxious and having a hard time my head started pounding and I could hear her talking and talking and faster and faster and she kept talking so fast and wanting the answers and this that and the other and I'm like right in front of everybody you know kind of said that little joke and that's when I knew I was a little bit better to speak and it went on and I finished everything and um, then I finished the day um, worst part of it was I got off work and I drove home but before I even made it home I got lost for two hours because I was having a panic attack in my car when I have a panic attack I completely blank out I don't know any sense of direction and I love to road trip as you guys know so I know east west north and south pretty good I know where I'm at know where I'm going just look at a few signs I know that this town is closer to that town and blah 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 and whatever I couldn't read signs I couldn't focus so I just kept driving and I almost drove all the gas out of the car before I made it home when I started to calm down I got out at the gas station and asked a young man where which way Fort Worth was I think he could realize that I was under some sort of panic I told him my phone had died which was a lie my phone is completely <laughs> I had um, energy but I have no service and uh, but I just couldn't figure out where I was I could only get out that one question which way to get to Fort Worth downtown Fort Worth because I live real close to downtown Fort Worth as long as I can see the sky um, scrapers then I know which way to go just go towards the city so he helped me and I got home and I didn't go to work today what am I gonna do take my medicine and paint just like I did today and that's what I'm doing right now I'm medicated and I'm painting and I'm listening to booktuber and to writers watching art documentaries and got my books here letting this paint dry that's it I told DJ I can't do it so I don't know if I'm at a point where I can't work with people anymore so I do apply for another job that doesn't have me talking to people and just a labor job and I have um, that interview next Monday so I pray that it's something that I can really do physically which I'm not in the best physical shape so BJ offered to you know make me a guest at his gym so mommy can get in shape and do some work so I can make some money
Monica Hara in conversation with Madalika Sik. Hey, thanks everybody in here and I guess everybody out in the store listening, the overcapacity crowd who are waving to us. Hi. Um, so I just want to start with a show of hands. Who has read this book? Wow. Not I. I haven't read A Little Life by Hanya. And I'm looking at our other book that I do own, or the only book that I do own. People, The People in the Trees. Hanya Nagahara. Yanagahara. And this is the second interview that I'm listening to on A Little Life. The first one was really good. I don't think I'm going to listen to this second one. This one is 51 minutes and 55 seconds long. I started my day listening to booktuber Stephanie. Hi Stephanie! I enjoy listening to Stephanie. Um, there was a video it was so cute that she did that I just watched. Uh, there's my stuff in the back. Yeah, anyway, um, she got so emotional about this book and I have got to track it down. I will link it below because it just escaped my mind. But my goodness, you know how you love to hate a character. It sounds like she hated the characters but really um, was emotional about what they went through and I cannot wait to get it. I think she was reading these books for the Man Booker Prize or not the Man Booker Prize, the Booktube prize awards um which i don't really follow much um i only follow certain people that are a part of it like when they do theirs so it just kind of came up and that's the video that i watched so it wasn't like i was looking for the youtube or the booker oh my god what is it booktuber prize awards what have you so um that's just the video that happened to come up again while binge watching stephanie this morning so I'm at home because, and I need to uh, maybe not talk so loud, and I don't think I'm talking too loud anyway. Excuse me, Alice Walker is right in front of the speaker, and uh, I love me some Alice Walker. Alice Walker, writer and activist, activism pays the rent on being alive and being here on the planet, says Alice Walker. Another quote, hard times require furious dancing. Each of us is proof. I love that. Alice Walker quotes. And on the front, freedom after all is like love. The more you give to others, the more you have. Okay? Give freedom. Give love. And talking about Alice Walker, I'm going to show you some books and a gift that I received from the beautiful Kutu, who goes by Lioness Reads over on Instagram. Y'all, um, I started a new job last Thursday. Today is Tuesday. I started this job last Thursday. So Friday I came home and this was on my steps uh, right in front of the door of me and DJ's apartment. Gathering blossoms under fire essays right from alice walker the journals of alice walker and you guys guess what okay i've already started reading it but i'm reading the introduction by valerie boyd and it's really good and i love her admiration her um her knowledge in alice walker but the journals of alice walker from 1965 to 2000 1965 is when i was born so my favorite female writer of all time, Alice Walker, journals, entry, or for this particular book from the year I was born. Very special. And I've got my James Baldwin bookmark that I'm holding, the introduction that I'm currently reading for Valerie Boyd. Oh. And this is the picture on the back, the now Alice Walker. Isn't she beautiful? Beautiful young woman. Beautiful older woman. Seasoned woman. I love that. She reminds me of my mother. There's something about her, especially this book um, picture right here. 
just the way she's holding her face and her eyes and those just I think that's why she's one of my favorites also because my mother took me to the library on a regular basis and she also introduced me to the poetry book that I was reading in April and still reading in May I started it in April for poetry month and still reading and I'm enjoying it Rita Dove selected poems and I got a whole stack here and I'll go over that in just a little bit because right now is just not the time. Hold on. 